All right, guys. So thank you for your time. Welcome. My name is Jordan Kuzmov. For the people who don't know me, I'm the creator of Delta. And as you know, um, we have released a new version, FX Delta 2. So in this video, it's basically dedicated to current users. I just want to go ahead and make it as short as possible and cover um, what are the changes, all right? What, what was changed here? And I did separate this presentation into two parts. In the first part, we're going to talk about the new functionalities, right? Things which are basically core changes. And in the second part, we're going to cover uh, changes which are not affecting that much the core of the software, but they're more visual aids and visual tools for us to help us and make our lives a bit easier. If you have any questions, please use the chat window. I will come back to that once I see it. So starting with the functionality. As you probably saw already, for those of you who got the second version, uh, we're introducing aggressive entries. Now, Delta might be good, but one thing that was missing is uh, the frequency of trades. And many people were talking about that, and I was thinking about how to make more entries. And I think one of the uh, logical scenarios here to, to improve it was to introduce second type of entries. And as you can see, we're talking about divergences. Now, in the first version, as you know, uh, what we're doing is basically we get direction from the higher time frame, which is the delta pattern. Then on the lower time frame, we're looking for pullbacks. And once this pullback provides us with divergence, we're looking for the middle point of this divergence. And once broken, we were getting the signals. What we're doing now is we're also going to get signals once the divergence is completed. Now, that gives us a few benefits here. And obviously and clearly, the first benefit is the risk-reward ratio. On the other hand, um, having an entry only after the breakout is much more conservative. This is where we're creating a convergence idea. This is where we're breaking the actual high. So that's why it's called aggressive entry. Okay, so I would like to stress on that. For those of you who know me, I'm a pretty conservative trader, so these things do matter. And um, I don't like you to think we have some holy grail. You see arrow, we go ahead and buy. You will never hear me saying that. Okay, just to be clear, but again, back to the risk reward ratio. Why is it better? Because many times, like in this example here, the divergence and ideally a false break would be happening pretty far away from the actual breakout zone. And many times we have the opportunity to enjoy this move because let's think about it logically, right? If we have a clear, strong direction let's say in this case it's up and we get uh, the divergences near good levels and we're going to talk about divergences in a separate um, webinar where we're going to cover aggressive entries on their own, right? But in such cases, we're able to enjoy from these moves even before the actual breakout is happening. Okay, so this is the first beneficial thing Second of all, um, there will be cases where you enjoy profits from the first entry and then the second one will be failing. Of course, we try to avoid these situations. We have extra filters and uh, manually further analyzing the given signal, but in the cases where it happens, you're kind of going to end up in break even here rather than complete loss. Okay, of course, we're talking about best case scenarios here. <clears throat> the second uh, very interesting and beneficial thing for me personally 
as I've started investing more and more time into learning scalping and basically going into the lower time frames is that especially when we're using four hour chart in combination with the 15 minute chart that entry becomes perfect for intraday and for scalping and you probably saw some of the uh, members in the group in the community already started using it this way and it only makes sense i mean that's that's the whole purpose of it right we can do that easily by having these aggressive entries so what's the difference in terms of visuals well we're simply going to see a slightly smaller um arrow here as opposed to the conservative entry so aggressive conservative entry all right and what's also really important for us to understand is that this arrow the small arrow is going to appear on the chart once the divergence is complete meaning that we're going to see tick on the histogram and this is where we're going to get this arrow there I guess I mentioned that we're going to have a separate independent webinar on aggressive entries. I would like to give you my ideas, my thoughts, my tips, if you will, on how I do it. Okay, it's pretty much simple stuff, but still, I would like to cover this base as well, especially for the people who are not familiar with divergences. So um, stay tuned, guys, we're going to do it. Yes, I'm recording it. All right, any questions on this one? If anything, guys, post there and I'll come back to it later, okay? As I said, I would like to make this quick as possible so I don't take too much time. Next, we have added the MT5 support. <coughs> <clears throat> Excuse me, and this is extremely important because of the recent, well, not so recent, it's already 10 years, but MetaQuotes, this is basically the company who owns, the, the creators of MetaTrader platform, they're really pushing towards MT5. And I'm not sure if you know, but new brokers are not allowed to offer MT4 anymore. So basically the whole industry when we talk about MetaTrader is shifting towards MT5. And we already saw in some of the emails from support that many people are, the, the only option they have is MT5. So if your broker allows you to trade MT5 only, good news, we have it covered. And to be honest, MT5 really has, um, many benefits over MT4, especially when it comes to backtesting and multi-core trading, all these things, which are probably not very interesting to majority of you, but um, if you have the option, start learning it, guys, because it, it, it really offers much more than MT4. So that's about this one. Then we have the multi-language support. I know most people, are doing pretty fine with English, but still we had, um, well, not complaints, we should rather say requests for other language support. So we decided to do it and we currently cover French, German and Spanish. I show here on the screenshots how it looks for the other languages. All this is available for you in the download page. So basically you have a few buttons there which are giving you MT4, MT5 and the different languages below. Um, a very important note here to mention is that only the software, meaning the dashboard and the scanner are translated. Of course, all the settings inside, etc. but we don't have the menu, we don't have the webinars, uh, the download pages, all relevant materials are not translated. We only have translation for the actual software. So again, you would still need a bit of English to understand how the whole thing works. But then um, if you prefer so, you can use the given translation 
if that's one of the languages you prefer over English. Piotr is saying he's got the French manual, so maybe we can upload that as well. Thanks for mentioning, Piotr. All right, then we're going to the Delta quality filter, and this is really something I'm proud of, guys. And <laughs> I'm the kind of person who is going to give you always first the negative stuff. I mean, I'm not living in some dream world where everything is perfect, uh, but the Delta quality is really a big milestone, at least for me in terms of growing and developing the software. Basically, everything started with the feedback and all the conversations from the Telegram group. So again, thanks everyone who was participating during these two years. But what I managed to get from this conversation is that people are not able to identify and to analyze the Delta pattern on the higher time frames and its quality. Meaning that many times we have the technical conditions met, but what we're looking for in reality is not really there. So we started looking into different angles on how we can somehow automate it. Again, even though this is not 100% perfect, um, we cannot go ahead and scan previous moves, waves, you know, all these complex things which are pretty easy for the eye once, you know, the, the human eye is trained to, to catch them. It's kind of complex to be coded, but we managed to do a pretty decent job there. And this filter, guys, I strongly advise you to use it, all right? Again, it's not perfect, but it will give you an idea whether the pattern on the higher time frames um, is worth looking at and whether you should put more attention to this or, or less attention to that. So we have two states, state A and state B. This one is the better one. So if you see quality A, that would be the better one. If you see quality B, you should think twice and check the higher time frames twice before you go ahead and start looking for the setups. Now, I would like to show you two examples here on what exactly we are doing. And this is your front daily chart. This is the trade manager screenshot from the lower time frames. I think it's either H4 or H1. So look what, what's happening there. We have this strong push down and then the divergences are there. We have false breaks, we have all that. And this is where we had this impulse nice move with momentum to the upside, breaking all these highs, you know, just it's clear that the price is creating a momentum. This is what we're looking for when it comes to um, good delta patterns. And usually the first wave that you're going to see, if it comes with a delta pattern is good. What do I mean? You can check out the previous screenshot. So let's say we had bullish move and this is where the price starts moving lower somewhere around this point you're going to get a bearish delta pattern and this is where we want to be trading after the first one right uh, so of course we have the alpha pattern which is confirming exactly that if we have previous move in the other in the opposite direction but when you put all this together it becomes easy because here, technically speaking, we're still going to get the ratio, right? But if you take a look at the overall picture, this is not where we want to be trading because we had multiple divergences in a row. The trend is already exhausted. We saw some huge moves to the downside. And basically, we're expecting it to, to give us at least pullbacks here, right? Strong pullbacks. So you can see the difference. And now, if I switch to the next slide, you'll see what's happening here. This is your pound. I think it was daily chart, yeah. Uh, strong push up, then immediate V pattern to the downside. This is definitely not a corrective move, guys. Look at it. Corrections or consolidations are happening in a slower pace, 
Okay, so we have impulse and then slower, slower the price is correcting con or consolidating. And this is the kind of things we're, we're trying to filter here. Okay, so again, technically speaking, that would be a delta pattern based on the ratios. But is it really what we're looking for when it comes to trading? I would say not, not sure about you, but for me, this is not uh, what I'm looking for, right? It's already second wave, the divergence is there. We have these crazy moves before that. And now the price is kind of slowly moving up. Now go ahead and compare it to the previous move. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm pretty sure you can spot the difference. And this is where we get quality B. Now, again, it's not a perfect solution for all our problems, but it will give us an idea whether we should be looking in depth what's happening on the higher time frames or not really. Okay? So, again, I'm very proud of this thing. I hope you're going to like it once you start trading it. And most of all, it will just help you to, to make more money with that. <clears throat> All right, questions about the quality filter. Cool, moving on. One more example, okay, nothing major here but just wanted to show you again what's happening and then we go to the trading journal now in the software this is called archiving trades trade archive but what it is is basically a trading journal and we introduced it here because many of the people who are using the software are still beginners and it doesn't matter how much we stress on this point for one reason or another even students from the co-op or different strategies, for one reason or another, they simply don't, don't follow or track their performance. Again, I don't know why, but if you're not tracking something and how this thing is performing, your actions, what you're doing, how can you know if you're moving up or down, if you're improving or you're not improving? So we thought about it and we decided to include it here as well. Uh, in simple words, in a nutshell, what it's going to do is it's going to take screenshots of your entries. So basically once you enter, once you exit, uh, you're going to see here in the folder, it's all detailed, explained in the manual, you can find the folders there, but basically it's going to get you this uh, screenshots. Why is this important, guys? Because when we look at the statement in MT4 or whatever website like MyFX book you're using, you just see a line of performance going up, going down, winning or losing. And for some reason, again, most people don't ask the question, why? I mean, if you're losing, I mean, I can understand people who are winning, they, they don't go in that because let's say if it ain't broken don't fix it right but if you're losing and you keep doing the same thing how can you expect to get different results and i'm not talking about this software alone i'm talking in general okay so this kind of aid here is super powerful because when you go back manually on the chart it's very different than when you're looking at the chart live okay why did you take this specific setup and this way you can see what exactly you are looking at during the time of entry why did you decide that was a good setup if it wasn't so if you have the will to, to work on your performance this tool is definitely going to help you again it's nothing magical unless you put some effort into it it's not going to do anything Right, it will just take some space in your hard drive. But um, if you really want to, to move forward and analyze your trading, I think it will be 
super useful for most of the people. Uh, now, one thing we should also mention here is that when you have the trading journal, if it's enabled, guys, and you go ahead and close the chart that you're trading on, it will be forced open. Why? Because in order to take a screenshot for the closing, let's say, stop loss, take profit, whatever it is, the chart must be open. So if this setting is enabled on your platform and on your scanner, don't be surprised if you see the chart being open again automatically, okay? Next, we're introducing news on the chart. Helpful feature, especially if you're trading in the short term and there are news coming within a few minutes or hours. Um, what we can say here is in terms of the time, this is important part. Basically what we're doing is we take from some APIs um, all this news, okay, with the timing, and we try to implement it on the broker. We did spend quite a lot of time on this one, but we still have issues with that. And sometimes the lines in terms of hours are not going to fit the actual hours, okay? That's why we have the option of manual adjustment. Basically, you can push them uh, backwards or forward. So my strong recommendation here is for you to go ahead and check out on a website like, I don't know, Forex Factory, for example, or any other website. If these lines, <clears throat> excuse me guys, if these lines fit on the chart where they're supposed to be, and if the automatic time zone thing doesn't work, please go ahead and adjust them. Again, for short-term trading, it's important for us to follow where and when do we have news. Uh, pretty standard options come with this one. Basically, we can filter it by current symbol only, or we can show news for all available instruments. And we can filter it by importance, meaning we have um, high impact, medium impact, low impact news. So you can select which one of those you would like to see on the chart. And this option comes with color filters. So let's say this is low impact, yellow one would be medium impact, and then let's say red will be high impact. All this changeable. So again, if you're using short term trading, 15 minutes scalping and all this, it could be really beneficial for you to you know, have it on the chart and not constantly switch back and forth and maybe sometimes even forget if something is coming up. Uh, all right, next one that we have is the automatic FIBO tool that we implemented inside. So what we're doing here is we take the delta pattern, the bottom and the top, assuming that this is a bullish pattern, of course, and we're going to draw the FIBOs on the chart and we're going to show the levels of 38, 50, and 61.8 right there on the chart for you. So once you start trading and looking at the lower time frames and all this, um, you can see where you have strong levels. You know that levels mean a lot, especially if you're scalping. Uh, it could be the, the huge difference between winning and losing. So we decided this could be a very interesting help. Of course, you can do that manually, just like with the news. Most of these things could be done manually, guys. As usually, I mean, I try to do the things the way that anyone could you know, benefit from this. But for those of you who are willing to pay the price for that, it's just an extra help for you. Nothing else, right? Again pretty much 99% of all that could be done manually. So I guess this is pretty self-explanatory, no need to uh, waste more time on this thing. Going to the next one, which is the manager. <clears throat> I don't have a special name for that, so it could be manager, it could be supervisor, but basically what we're doing here is we're using the scanner as the manager. Meaning that if you have a few trades running, let's say your Frank Pound, whatever, one, two, three trades, 
you can close all these charts. These charts could be closed. And you can leave the scanner alone to go ahead and manage your trades, targets, moving stop loss, etc. Okay, so what do we benefit from that? Here it is. First of all, we're going to save resources from the computer. I know many people are using different strategies or you're using some older laptop uh, that doesn't have enough CPU or RAM. So we are thinking in terms of smooth um, overall experience when dealing with the Delta software. Okay, that's the first thing. Next, we're keeping our trading environment much more organized. I don't know about you, but I usually find myself with 15, 20, 25 charts on a given platform. And that alone becomes confusing and sometimes it's annoying. Meaning that if I can remove a few charts from my setup on the bottom, right? If I can remove, sorry about the drilling, we don't have luck. Uh, but if we can minimize it just a bit, it's still something. So again, it's nothing that we cannot live without, but I think it would be useful if you're dealing with multiple charts during all times or you have um, older PC. And the last thing which many would agree or disagree, I'm not sure, but um, if you have the chart open and many people just go ahead and stare at their trades and usually mess, mess with this entry unnecessary. Like there are no divergences against you, there are no levels. For some reason, people panic and just start cutting the profits earlier than expected or than they should be and they let the stop losses run. So by closing the charts, I think psychologically that could be beneficial for some people not looking at it and just let it develop as it is especially with the higher time frames if you're part part-time trader open the trade go do your thing let it work right uh, all right so that's that's about the core functionalities now we are going to cover the uh the visual things you probably noticed that we have also introduced here inside the trade manager this entire panel, right? We have introduced Delta Patterns sub tab or, or tab or whatever it's called, part of it. And this thing we figured out, of course, that came with experience. We, we, we didn't implement it in version one. But now that we started using the software more and more and people start giving us um, opinions and suggestions, we came to, to the point where we realized we need this thing to be present on the chart. Why? Because the scanner is giving you the overall picture of all the instruments that you're interested in. Right? Then you click and once you came to the trading dashboard, it, it was like you're kind of lost there. What's happening on the higher time frames? What's happening on the lower time frames? What's the overall view from Delta? And this is where this thing comes, comes in hand. Um, we were looking at the different time frames and the directions there. And that was covered in the first version. But basically what I was saying there is once you have different directions, it could be tricky, right? Because daily is working with H1 and H4. On the other hand, weekly is working with daily. So technically speaking, they are not really contradicting with each other. But if I know that the momentum on weekly is bearish, I will make sure to go ahead and see what are the levels, what are the fibos, where do we stand in terms of uh, structure of the market? Do we have room for these bullish moves or the weekly pattern is bad and it's under divergences and I should ignore it or this is just starting and we are likely to have shallow moves based on the daily and the one hour and four hour chart. So we're trying to kind of trying to put everything together and we're trying to do it right here in this simple box. The next thing that we are uh, introducing is the active dot. Now this is a huge miss and I really 
sorry that uh, it was not part of Delta One, but luckily we, again, based on the feedback, guys, for which I thank you, we managed to introduce it. So basically, the doc is going to tell you uh, the combination of the time frames that you're working with, right? So let's say that daily is working with four hour and one hour chart. This is our combination. This is where we get the delta pattern. This is where we're looking for the actual entries on the lower time frames. So what happens if I'm currently on the one hour chart or the four hour charts, the dot will mark the daily chart. So now I know that the given time frame, whatever I'm currently sitting on, right, is related to this one. That's the whole purpose. Again, nothing major, we can live without it, but it's just something uh, to make our life easier and to navigate easier with the software. Next, we have the trade flag, which is also kind of beneficial. I mean, it looks like nothing, but it actually um, turned out to be pretty decent feature here. So the first thing that we do is, of course, we see where we have exposure. We see where we are trading. We have the time frames. We have the pairs. So currently, QEN, I have entry on, let's say, the daily chart, right? Or whatever chart is going to be. That's good on its own. It's fine. All right. But then, uh, and we actually didn't realize this is happening, but it happened to me one or two times, and I realized I'm going to be overexposing myself because I had entries from previous days on the same currencies. Now, I'm, I'm not sure if it was this specific currency. This is just for example. So let's say I had entries from QEN, right, from let's say a week ago, and I totally forget about it. And my terminal, where I see the entries and the profit and all this, is closed. I don't see it. And then you start analyzing something else, you get signals on these two, and you're looking for entries there. And then boom, you realize, okay, but then I'm going to be overexposing myself because I already have entry on this one. If I attack two more, that's already three currency pairs using all of them Kiwi, right? The same currency, and that's not good. So we kind of, um, created something which is helping for this. And this is much more important in my opinion than the first point, because for the first point, yeah, you can see um, the entries below, but having a very quick look at that can eliminate the idea of overexposure. Next, we have the levels and this was again something which I'm sorry it was not introduced in the first version, but basically once we go to the trading chart, in this case, let's say this is the four hour chart, we're going to see where the delta pattern is coming from the, the, the daily, right? So if this is H4 we, and we're working with daily, then we can see where this pattern is. And this is where we see the daily retraces as well. Because on the four hour chart, we're looking for bullish entries based on daily. Right? I think you follow the logic, it's again self explanatory. Um, why is this important? Well, besides knowing and just seeing it visually, once we reach the top, this is usually a pretty strong, in that case, resistance zone. And let's say this is one hour chart, and we don't really see this on the chart, right? It's somewhere right here not in our visible scope. Uh, once you see the top being reached, if for some reason you're not paying attention, boom, it's right there. So you know this is a good place to, I don't know, move stops if you didn't or cash out or whatever it is that you're going to do, but you know you're approaching a swing. So it's right there on the chart. One more, again, this is not something crucial, but uh, I wanted to have these two buttons, guys, because as I told you many times, I'm just lost in my uh, MT4 by having too many charts open. And what we did is we, we created these two small buttons. They really don't take much 
place off of the chart. They're not going to stand on your way, I promise you. But once you click the first one, you will be taken to the scanner chart. So if you're working with uh, Delta and you're trying to do all these things like analysis and all that, click on it, boom, back to the scanner. Second one is the reset of the template. I don't know about you, but I like to draw, put extra fibos, trend lines, levels, whatever it is, and at some point, the chart is just cluttered. So reset template, you know what you want to do. Let's say you placed your entry and you just click on the reset button and everything is back to original template without any drawings or anything like that. And this is actually where we end. So again, if any questions guys, now would be the time for you to, to shoot. I think we did pretty good, 35 minutes. If I have already entered the trade, can I change the TP1 for TP2? I know that is that it is enough to change it normally as for an ordinary trade. Uh, as long as you have the TP1 line on the chart, you can do anything with it, yes. Yeah. But let's stick to questions regarding all these new things. If, if nothing, guys, let's end it right here so we don't. Trading dashboard, how do you reduce the size? I can only see the trade management until filters. Lucky, let's talk about this in private, please. We have a workaround and I'm pretty sure it, it can help you. But it's not an easy explanation I can put here now. Just contact me on Telegram or Skype or email and we're going to resolve it. Yeah, Piotr, we're going to cover it in, in private in Telegram, no problem. I just want to limit the amount of this webinar to the things we covered. So if you don't have questions about these things, guys, I would like to stop here and then we can talk about anything else. All right, so um, that would be all for this webinar, guys. Thank you again. If you have any other questions that come to mind later on, bring it up in Telegram and we're going to cover it. Bye for now.